So this is the first of the various like teach-ins that we're going to be doing. And this first one is going to be about efficient kits. So we're going to be running them on stream and they're going to be a bit longer than usual video and a little bit more informal. And I think it'll be fun because we'll obviously have chat input as well um, as to what, what we're talking about. So to start with, why should we run efficient kits? Well, my philosophy generally with Tarkov kits is making making money is all well and good, but losing less money is kind of just as good in, in many, many ways. Um, and what we're looking to do is we're trying to get the, the most efficient kit that we can for the effectiveness. So, I mean, it's, it's obvious in some cases, things like vertical foregrips, where you swap one over like the RK2, um, if we've got like an, an M4 to hand, something like this, if you have any any kind of hand guard, we can actually just put this on. So something like the RK2, although it is very good at recoil, changing this over to something like, you know, even the VFG, which doesn't have any recoil on it, you gain 15 ergonomics for, for six recoil points. So obviously there's a middle ground here, like RVG black, you lose three recoil for 15 ergo. And that kind of ratio is is really quite high. So what we're trying to do is, is min-max our, our loadouts so that we don't we don't spend too much on things that don't matter. You know, we're not spending 20k on one point of ergo and yada, yada, yada. We're not like spending loads of money on space that we don't really need. So I think like the, the most basic often is shotguns is, is usually where I like to start with with efficient kits because they generally are some of the best bang for buck that you, you can get in general, um, especially early wipe. And, and when you don't have many trader levels or anything like that, some of the best stuff that you can get is, you know, even things like Jaeger 1 where... You've got the the one five three barter, which you can't necessarily get access to early because it's a bit bit tricky. But even something like the revolver shotty is really good because this is like one of the the semi it's one of the only semi auto shotguns you can get access to right at the beginning of the game. And basically, because people's heads are unprotected and their legs are unprotected, you have lots of different options for killing people. And this works right way through the wipe, which is why I think shotguns are always a good place to start because they kind of work for anybody. You can use them late game, early game, uh, whatever, and they're and they're very very uh, easy to use and cheap to set up. Um, one of the big advantages about the 153, for example, is the fact that because you don't have a magazine, you can go and take your shotgun shells and you load them into your pockets. Let me go and find some. But even something very basic like 525 mil, when you load this in, you've got some spares in your pockets and you can run something extremely lean without actually even a bag or a rig if you really, really want to take it to some crazy level and just go in you know, like a, a, a berserker to just like upgrade in raid. So even if you wanted something relatively decent, like a Propotol, an IFAC, and then uh, you can go with something for a heavy bleed, you can, this this kit actually does work just fine. <laughs> so you've got rounds in your pockets, you've got heavy bleed fix here, and you've got the IFAC here, and you can combine both these keys together. I have a, you know, there's a hot keys guide that I've done about how you can combine two keys together at the same time so that the heavy bleed goes off first, and then the heel goes off second. And this, this kit actually is, you know, for this gun is like insanely efficient, um, and really, it's just, it's kind of your choice as to what you what you do with with the shotties. But yeah, at the beginning of the game, I like the revolver shotty. This is super ratty, yeah, I agree, I agree. But you can go with the revolver shotty and something like this as as a loadout, um, and that's just yeah, it's 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 super cheap. You'll always get the shotguns back, and you basically lose like the very minimum uh, minimum amount of stuff. The other one that I really like, I mean, I did a video on this recently, so this is probably not so much news to to people, but the um, the PPSH or the the, the, the Papa Sha, as everybody wants me to call it, is awesome because at level one you can grab grab this and you can put on the the drum, and this combination is really inexpensive. No one's going to take this gun. It can't jam, so you can just fire at will, and it's it's pretty insane. Now the two by twos is kind of tricky because you need to have the right rig to store this in, but early you can go even at level one, and you can get the Umka rig, which is, it's not the only one that you can do this with, but um, it's its one of the, the better ones, which is a bit big, bigger. The other two is at Ragman, you've got uh, Ragman ones, the, the Wartech, this one, the TV one, what is it, 109, 106, and that's got two by two. And then even Peacekeeper has one as well, I believe, but that's actually Peacekeeper two, so it's a little bit later. And that one is this one, the micro rig, which is, which is teeny tiny. And a little bit more expensive, but the the Umka is a very very good one. Um, early, there's obviously people also love the the SKS and the Mosin because they're 
yeah, they're just so they're so powerful for what you get. You can't buy PS rounds at level one anymore. Um, but again, these these top load in much the same way as a shotgun. So early wipe, you can just load in PS, and PS is really really good. And you can normally buy PS from fence. It does depend. To be honest, even T forty five is fine because this got moved as well. But they're you know they're they're quite similar. But if you refresh a couple of times, rather than just being stuck with seven seven six two HP, you can normally get some PS rounds as well. Um, the other alternative for big guns, obviously, is the the Mosin, which people use to great effect this wipe, and you can buy nice and cheaply, 34, 35k, and these things will just two tap everybody in the chest, which is which is insane, um, and and really really good. So, I mean, you know, we've gone through like early wipe stuff like a, a billion times, and basically, Skier is really where I would say the next. The next kind of, I don't know, upgrade is this. It's kind of like between Prapple and Skier, depending on exactly what you want to do. So let's go through Prapple first. So Prapple, once you get to level two, which is at um, which is at level 16, then you unlock access to both PS. So you can carry on using those other guns if you want to. Or you get access to PP, which defeats class four, which is really, really good. It's like right on that threshold that makes it decent. And there's also some barters for BT and things if you want to do sort of like, you know, Top loading, underloading of a bit of BT versus um, versus PP, and because you can buy these things on the flea market because you pass level fifteen, then you can legitimately actually use the BT ammo in conjunction with uh, PP. That's that's especially useful if you're kind of going through the wipe a bit later and you're a little bit behind on levels. Um, the other the other side, if you want to play more DMRE, I do actually think now I haven't done a video on it this wipe because. I think we're a little bit past that. But if you're kind of building up through the, the levels still, and this is kind of the top end of what you've got on uh, on Skier, I do actually think the RFB now is amazing. This this thing is, well, it, it's really amazing for efficiency. Let's put it this way. It's good It's good bang for buck because even though they, they changed it so that, the, um, so that the RFB is 55K on Skier 3, so it's a little bit more than it was, because they put the barter back onto Skier 2, these gas analyzers normally go for such a low price. So you can actually now buy the RFB even cheaper than you could previously, which is kind of insane. CPU fans will probably go for even less than this as the wipe goes on. There you go. So you could buy two CPU fans. You could change those into two gas analyzers and you could buy an RFB for 20,000 rubles, which is honestly bonkers. Like, let's actually just see. I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. If you bought one and two, did the, did the two barters. I wonder if you could actually make money doing this. Oh you, can, oh, you can only do one. You can only do one. Let's see, what's its resale price? Yeah, so that actually that actually makes money. So you could probably make money selling the RFB back to Mechanic doing that, which is pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so the reason why the RFB is kind of good now, and I didn't use it this wipe. Um, so M80 was the reason why people used the RFB previously, because you used to be able to get access to M80 on Peacekeeper 2, and the RFB was on Skier 2. But now um, the M80 got moved, so a lot of people didn't use it anymore. The thing that changed since then in the middle of the wipe, which is why I think it was a little bit too late, was uh, BCP. BCP got buffed, so it now has the same pen as PS, 7.62 PS, which is 35, but it does a lot more damage. So I'm going to just quickly pull it up so I can remember what it is. So the BCP FMJ does 83 damage and 35 pens. So it's like an enhanced version of, of, uh, of PS, in short. That's really that's really what it is, and so that gives you actually a decent amount of kind of drop off to play with. It's not so great on the pen if you're dealing with class four people, but as a kind of early game DMR, this thing actually works pretty well. And um, yeah, and the armor and the armor damage is pretty good too. That's that's a very good point. That's a very very good point. It's actually it's actually pretty good. Um, so next we have got oh yes for in terms of Prapple, there was something I wanted to linger on just briefly which is you get access to the aks 74u and the, the 74ub and the 74un now these three historically have always had a bit of an interesting relationship with the u having they've all got the same vertical recoil but horizontally the u has had the most the n is in the middle and the b is the smallest the problem with this though is a lot of people have caught on and the b is actually really good now and so they sell for a lot of money on the flea market so they're actually really quite expensive and the, the issue with this barter is that it also is kind of expensive, even if you sell back the suppressor. So I personally don't think it's necessarily worth going for the UB. I think you may as well just go for the UN because the difference between the B and the N in terms of the horizontal recall, since the buffs have come through, they kept the, the U, UN, UB um, pattern the same, but the gap between the UN and the UB is a lot smaller than it used to be. And the UN sells on the flea for a pittance. 
So I think that I don't think 50k is worth the decrease in horizontal recoil, probably considering the way that you were going to use this gun. So if you're using PP or BT, then I, I think you're probably better off using the, the UN. It's a lot more economic, but it gives you a bit more uh, a bit more controllability than than the standard U. Um, and but you you basically get that for for free almost because um, because these things are you know s similar cost uh, to buy an actual brand new one. It's similar cost, actually probably even less in some cases. So moving on from there, where do we get to next? We have the Peacekeeper when you get to level two. Um, this is really, this is basically describing like the progression that I took this wipe and some of the other suggestions along the way. It's like I didn't necessarily use every single gun, but once you get Peacekeeper through, which is a, a lot easier now because they made changes to the flash drive so you can actually get his quest line early. If you can just like press through on Peacekeeper and get yourself to cult part two, then you can get him 856A1 which is very similar to PP and BT in many ways, but because it does um, quite a bit more damage than BT, this is like the perfect class 4 buster, and the 5.56 five, guns, there's a lot of them for the mid-game that are, are very, very controllable and very easy to use without actually needing any, any kind of modding, so it makes them really, really cheap. And that, typically for me, is normally the MDR, which right now is like 55k. You basically don't need to spend any money on this. You could literally stick a scope on this, and that'll be it. Or suppress it, and that'll be it. Like it really doesn't matter what you do. You could put like any vertical form grip. Like you, you basically can't do anything wrong with this. I did a video on this where you just can't. There's not whatever you do. The ADSB is very similar. The recoil is very similar. Like there's there's very little that you can do about this. Um, which is kind of a pro and a con. It means that after the mid game, it starts to fall off because you can't make it any better. But in the early game, it's great because you just buy it, and it's just the whole thing. The whole package is just complete and off the shelf. Um, the other one is one of the various versions of the Scar L, which is also pretty good. You can do some little bits to these such as changing over, especially on the long barreled version. Um, there's like this M lock thing, but I think this comes later on in, in the progression. But you can change over the, the pistol grip, for example, and there's there's a few parts in here. Um, and the Scar's got you know really good horizontal recoil, still best in class, although that has been degraded a bit by the fact that now everything has better horizontal recoil. So it matters a lot less uh, than, than it used to. But the Scar's like a, another potential choice. It's it's also it's also pretty good with 5.6A1. So that, that's kind of like the, the mid game, like efficient weapons, I think, to use there. Um, the, the other like honorable mentions is after forest clearing, you get to flechette. So back to shotties again, if you want to have the, the 153 or the 155 or any of those kind of shotguns. The, the problem here is not forest clearing. So forest clearing, you have to kill, I think it's 30 scavs on any map. Um, it's the one before that, which is secure perimeter, killing six uh, PMCs in the factory. So that's really the main the main problem for uh, getting access to Flechette. But once you do, Flechette is an absolute beast. It makes completing all those quests like setup and the ones where you need to use a shotgun, it makes those much, much, much easier, which is awesome. Then... After this, you've got a couple of choices with, um, we're not going to go in too much detail into these, but you've got a couple of choices at Workbench 2 in terms of rounds. You've got SMB, which you could use in the Mosin, um, or I guess if you were buying the SVD, you could use it in that. You have SP6 for the VSS, uh, APM. You can actually craft Flechette as well in, in Workbench 2, and also M856A1 if you want to use it before Peacekeeper. So there's there's a couple of other options that are quite good before you jump up to the, the next category. So Peacekeeper at level 3 gets access to probably what I think is one of the most imbalanced rounds in the game, which is FMJ for the MP7. The MP7 is yeah, increasing in price. It's it's much more favorable this wipe than it has been previously for very good reasons. FMJ has 40 pen, even though you can only get access to the 20 rounders until mechanic three. Uh, FMJ having 40 pen is way better than all the other equivalent rounds for um, the other SMGs, like the, the P90 and the, all, the, all the other ones you have to craft the top ammo for the fmj you, you don't you just buy it from peacekeeper so it does seem a bit out of place so these are a little bit more expensive than they have been but again you can't do much to them other than put a suppressor on the suppressor is super expensive so i don't recommend i don't recommend bothering with it and with the a1 version you can't even change the foregrip so you literally just add a, add a laser and add an optic put some fmj in it and it's great and i actually completed punisher 4 using 20 rounders in shoreline it's just as long as you are aware and you know that you're going to run out quickly like the fire rate of 950 on this makes it run out super fast but you know, you can do it pre-mechanic three. Like some people will tell you it's not possible, but if you're careful, you can absolutely use it to your advantage and make it work. I guess in terms of bullets, so let's just move on to uh, to prep all three. And you can buy BT from him. Uh, BT was buffed recently, and I'm still considering whether to do something on this, but BT is now 42 pen. This thing shreds class four and now does actually pretty well against class five just because it does so much, uh, so much damage. I mean, 
the two two armor specifically, I, I should say. I, I, to put it in context, you know, if you look into five five six, M eight five five A one has forty four pen, and BT now has forty two pen. So BT is slow. Like BT has been buffed and buffed and buffed and buffed and buffed. This thing used to have thirty seven, then it was forty, now it's forty two. It's actually creeping up on five five A one, which is quite surprising. And five five A one with forty four pen is not an instant kill against class or an instant pen against class five either, but it slowly erodes it away. BT's kind of getting to that same point. So it's not uh, not quite as good, but it's it, much easier to access it because it's only Prapple 3. It comes a lot earlier. And um, yeah, it's just, it, it also gives you a bit more of the ability to, I guess, to reach out and, and kill people at, at range when you're firing at Thorax. Unfortunately, BT won't kill people through Class 4 helmets because of the damage mitigation, but that's, that's definitely for another time. Um, and then... I guess like after this really is only only one thing to say is about peacekeepers the next big milestone for 55A1 M80 and M62 if you're using either 762 NATO or 556 um outside of these you really have to be using the workbench 3 to craft M995 which is one of the best crafts BP and M61 which are also pretty good there's other things in there but I think M995 for 556 BP for 762 by 39 and M61 for uh, 762 NATO I think those are the three best bang for buck they get you the most effectiveness out of the time that you spend doing them because the guns that you use for them don't fire too quickly um, or you get good effectiveness out of them or in the case of m9 m5 you can stack them with m855 a1 and it's and it's good it's interesting actually because i i had written down in the notes that uh that I, I put down for doing this like teaching i had that like basically noticed that no one uses the ump anymore and um, ironically, we actually did fight somebody with the UMP today with Match FMJ. But what, you've, what we've seen this wipe, and I think I'm pretty certain this will continue to be the case, is that we haven't seen any instances really, or I, I haven't, of people using the UMP with the AP ammo. And that's just not a thing anymore because the AP ammo takes so long to craft. People would rather craft something else for a serious gun. People, Because you were able to buy it on Peacekeeper, people used to use the UMP just as a throwaway sidearm when they're sniping or just take it in as a really budget kit because the UMP was really good and the AP ammo was quite cheap and was really, really powerful. The UMP now got nerfed and the AP ammo is now stuck behind Workbench 3. So people are just not making it. So the UMP is, is really fallen a lot considering you know, the way it used to be. Okay, so there's a question that I get all the time on stream. Um, we're going to go through a few bits. I was actually, I was going to go through gear a little in, a, in a second. But what we're going to do first is buy this, because otherwise it makes it hard to showcase. The Tarzan's my favorite rig for efficiency. You buy one hunting match, and then you can barter it for a Tarzan. That makes it one of the cheapest rigs in the whole game. You go to all rigs, it's very difficult to get anything under 10k. Sometimes you can buy those even down at 7k or something. So for the... For you know, for the same price as a bank robber, you're buying something with a lot more space in it. Uh, it's one of my it's one of my favorite rigs. I use it all the time unless I'm doing something very specific. And so what I was going to talk about was healing. Now I get I get asked about this all the time. This is the this is a, a, a constant topic as why my healing setup is so weird. Now, unless I'm doing something in particular, I pretty much always go car kit and two cats. And I have this hotkeyed with, like I said before, with you hold down five and then you let go of, of five on um on, on the car kits because I've got four and five item slots bound to five press and five release. Um the hockey's video tells people how that works otherwise. But the reason for this, so you, you can go like a lot of people go, you know, hemostat plus Salewa. But the problem is one of the one of the reasons about why like in, in a in, uh, let's put it this way, in a vacuum, a Salewa is the perfect med. It's the perfect med, and you'd have three of them or something if it was completely free, because the hem the the hemostat is only there to save the uh, the Salewa from running out of, of of points, right? I think I'm probably oh, no, I don't actually have one around, but it's to stop it from running out of points because the car kit only heals light bleeds, but the Salewa heals heavies too. But it takes so many points out of it, nobody ever bothers doing it. They always run it with a hemostat as well. So that kind of negates like one of the big advantages of the Salewa, which is that it will heal your limb at the same time as healing the heavy bleed. So on that basis, you're kind of like losing one of the advantages of it already. The second thing, having so much HP in there, there's very few situations, unless you're actually like a, a Giga Chad, in which you're going to be losing that much HP. And if you are killing so many players, you're probably taking their meds too. Like every time that I kill somebody, they've always got meds in their rig, as everybody does. And... I tend to not get three heavy bleeds either in one particular raid. So I tend to find that these are a little bit of a waste of money. Like usually they're, you know, 14, 15k or something. 
these guys are half the price. They're like three k instead, so it's only six for the for the two of them. Like two of these and a and a car kit that comes to about eighteen k or even less because there's a barter for these for the humpback salmons, and the humpback salmons can go down at you know nine k or seven k or whatever, and that can make car kits really really cheap. Um, and so yeah, they're about eighteen k and they can be a bit lower for this combo. Whereas if you have a slayer and one of these hemostats, that's probably about twenty nine thousand rubles at best, and that's even if you're using the the barter with a therapist for one of these paids so it's like 15k plus the other one so it's just shy of 30k so you're basically saving 15k per raid something like that so after 10 raids you'll be 150k better off and after 100 raids you'll be 1.5 million better off so i think it makes a big difference over the long run it's a very it's a very small you know small little it accrues in your you know your, your net wealth in tarkov over time um the reason why we do go for the cat and not for the the actual like hemostatic, uh, or sorry, the S march, because the S march has a five second use time, whereas the the cat has got a three second use time, which is the same as the hemostat. So these two, you're no worse off with the with the cat than you are with this. Whereas with the normal S march, you are, even though they are cheaper. I don't think the the five seconds is worth the tiny tiny inc incremental cost, if you know what I mean. Okay. Um, what is oh yes one other one other thing advantage about the car kit is that when these get low so i probably i'm not sure if i have a few because i've been doing this craft uh, myself yeah i don't actually have any to hand right now but in the hideout when the car kits get low ironically because you can turn those into uh Salewas, you should basically leave those as lower a hp as you can get away with and leave them on one health because well, you can do this one this craft here which is the car first aid one and S marches, and you can make yourself a slayer. So even when these car kits get down to you know one HP, keep hold of them, and then do this craft, and then you can basically make twenty, twenty-five thousand rubles from two of these car first aid kits. You, you probably end up making money. Sometimes you just die with the car kits, so you don't end up with loads of them. Um, but you just keep an eye on that and try to you know keep the ones that are running, running, running down, and keep them in your inventory so that you can craft them together and recycle everything. So the CMS kit is the next thing that I wanted to. To talk about because basically you know you could buy these from the flea or you can get them from the therapist barter but usually you just buy them from the flea market and this one say is 25k i think that's a that's an easy one because they're pretty much 5k per use just about and having low use cms can really hurt you in in game if you go back to sell one with like four out of five uses it sells back for 18144 so that's 4500 per use so it's really no big deal, right? You hardly lose anything for cycling these out. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little cost to just cycle them out back to these back to these five out of five ones. Yeah, if they went up to 30k or something, maybe you'd think twice about selling back a four or whatever. But these can genuinely save your life. And five uses is not that many. You can easily be healing three, four limbs after a big fight. And then you've only got one left. And if you get your stomach shot out later, it just it really sucks. So I do think it's always worth keeping the CMS topped up. Um, because it's kind of it's, it's almost free to just cycle them around with therapists because she buys them back for such a decent amount. Cool. So that's the the meds, and I, yeah, I guess the other thing I use, always use a, a propitol, um, just because propitols are really good. You could use a morphine. Like the three options really for something on the hot bar is like propitol, adrenaline, or morphine. But they're all about the same price. They're very similar, and propitol gives you this plus one per second incremental health regen over three hundred seconds, which is kind of more useful than the adrenaline's one. It's it's arguable, but the length of the painkiller combined with the health thing, I think it makes it preferable to either the morphine, which doesn't have the the heal, or adrenaline, which the 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 uh, painkiller effect is just is just too short. Show how you set the preset for the meds. Okay, yeah, people people always ask about this. We'll, we'll we'll just do that quickly then before we move on. So in the controls, in the controls, I have slot four set to five on release. I have slot five set to five on press. So the slot four in my inventory is when I release the button, and it doesn't like you don't actually really need to pay attention to what this like which way round this is because it'll just do what you do, right? So if I just press five on something else, if I want it to do heal my heavy first Ooh. and then heal the Hello, uh, welcome to the world of fiber. Thank you, Easy. Thank you, mate. Yes, we have fiber today, by the way, for everyone watching on YouTube. It's uh, it's excellent. We have uh, nine hundred symmetric. And finally, and it's it's awesome. So we're going to be doing lots of cool stuff with that. This kind of video included. So what we do is now we just do it in the order that we want it to happen in raid. So the one on press, we want that to happen. So you just hold down five. So we press five now. I hold down five. I keep keep it held. You move your mouse, and then you let go over the car kit. So now when you're in raid, if you have a heavy bleed and a heal um, and a, and some damage, 
then when you press five, it'll heal the heavy first. Um, if you don't have a heavy, you press five, nothing will happen because you don't have a heavy. When you let go, it'll use the car kit and heal your body. So you basically now have, and, and because this also prioritizes light bleeds over heals, you'll get heavies first, light second, heals third, in that order. If you do it right, which sometimes you don't. Anyway, so back to the gear. You want to go for something relatively cheap and efficient. Always a balaclava. You can use whatever you like. This one's not particularly swag or Gucci. The drip is not immaculate, but it's a lot better than having your naked head poking out of a bush like this. You're much more obvious. Always a balaclava of some kind. Rule number one. We talked about um, some rigs before. Tarzan's my go-to favorite because it's usually 10k or less. If you need a 2x2 two two slot, you know, we said there's the Omka, there's the micro rig, and there's the Wartech one, which you can use if you really, really need to. Uh, the other rig, which is a, a useful one to know, is the Thunderbolt. They're actually normally not that expensive because they're not huge. They're not enormous uh, Chad rigs. They're only about 20k. So you get, you know, two slot, like seven two I1s and two one by ones They're 20,000 rubles. But the, the thing about these guys is that they are the lightest, one of the lightest rigs in the game. So they're only 0.62 of a kilo. So if you're keen on staying underweight or your strength is not very high, they're a very, very useful rig to, to know about. And they give you a little bit more space than the Tarzan, but you, you're obviously spending a little bit more money. Uh, what's next? So, oh yeah, so next, helmets. It's, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky question, right? As to what you want to do with helmets. Most people think that you want to use helmets just for ricochet chance. If you want to do it just for ricochet chance, you may as well run this. It depends on how much they are. If they're really cheap, you can run the Tac Kek. This has a high ricochet chance. So this gives you pretty much the same ricochet chance as any other helmet with high, even though it's armor class one. It means any bullet that doesn't ricochet will kill you. But you'll probably always get this helmet back, to be honest, unless you're you know, found by scavs. If you want to move up very slightly, and I think it probably is worthwhile, then you can do the Bleach Barter at um, Ragman 1 for the Ratnik. This makes it very, very cheap. There's 20k for a Ratnik. And basically, once you've insured it once, again, you get these back over and over and over and over and over again because not many people take them. Um, and yeah, people aren't really upgrading to this thing. It's it's so cheap. It's not really worth it for you know loot min-maxing. So a lot of people just don't bother, don't bother taking them. So you know, the, having the the 6B, the, this is probably my go-to. Again, like how much protects you? It, it, it's, it's hard to know. I think a class four helmet will protect you more, but they're obviously a lot more expensive. And the insurance ability, like class four helmets will get taken and swapped a lot by people wearing these, whereas these won't get taken. So this will save you from scabs, some buckshot. You also get ears for free with this. So rather than wearing the you know, the tin helmet, the peen helmet, this gives you ears as well. So you get top nape and ears. So it's only from the front that you're, uh, you've got problems. Like getting shot in the ear is always really annoying. It always seems that anytime you don't go with ear protection, you always get shot in the ear, which is extremely frustrating. So armor, armor is the next important one. So in terms of class fours, like there are, there are rubbish armors that you can get from class four. Sometimes the best way to do it is just find any old armor rig. It doesn't really matter, like any armor and go to the flea and click on the body armor category in general and just scroll down and find the cheapest one. I do think class four is good. Class four does protect you against things like M8, 5, 6, A1, PP, whatever. Like those things are designed to beat, beat those, but it's still worth having it because they just cut like butter through class three, unfortunately. You can find ones that are okay normally at about 45, 50k. So like these ones, are, these ones are like half full. You, know, you usually have to, scroll, sometimes you have to scroll a little bit. We haven't scroll quite a lot today, actually, to find anything that's semi-decent. Kind of makes my point a bit more valid, actually, the thing we're just about to talk about. There you go. 50k for one of these is kind of like mediocre. They're not really, they're not really very good. I think there's, there's one barter that's overlooked by people because a lot of people, so... A lot of guys used to wait until they get to Ragman 2 so that they can do this, uh, where is it, this guy, the 6B3TM. But this is now 70k, and it's usually about that much on the flea because people won't let you, you know, buy it for less than that. So this is like stop being the go-to. Uh, this is this is go-to forever. I think there's an underrated armor now, which is this one. It's not that much worse. It's heavy. It's very heavy, but it's not that much worse. And it can be really cheap. If you get the soaps cheaply, these are kind of on the expensive side. That's 27k. For, for those and then the toilet papers the, this is cheap ish that's what 13 so it's 26k plus 27k so again it's about 50k but that gets you a brand new one it also gives you rig space too um so it's not it's not like you're wearing one of those ceramic class fours from the flea market where they're 50k but then you have to buy a rig as well yeah you could just buy the um the the tarzan that we talked about but you get this for free so that kind of saves you 10,000. um but yeah, it's it's very, very heavy. So that's the one issue with this. Uh, it's ceramic, so it won't repair very well. Um, it's just, you don't really have that many choices when you're at Ragman 2. 
You can go and barter for things like the MMAC if you want. You can just go for the 6P3 TM, but they're not amazing. I guess the MMAC is still good, but it's, it's you know, they're, they're relatively expensive these days compared to uh, the other options. And still being at class four, how much extra protection do you really get? And especially without, without Thorax. I guess there's one more which can sometimes be good on the flea, but it really, really depends. It's unfortunate that it's at Ragman 3, which is the Thor, the NFM Thor, because by the time you get to Ragman 3, you don't ever need his armor anymore. Sometimes you can find the Thors. These are basically the same as the 6B3 TMs, and sometimes they go for around the same price as the Thor from Ragman, which makes them actually okay. These are quite useful for things like Punisher 4, because in Class 4, there's actually very few armored vests. The Trooper is one of the only ones that, that there is, the really, really crappy ceramic ones. And then there's this one here, the, um, the the Thor. So, right. So what we're doing next, we are going to look at uh, Rag. Yeah. So Ragman three. This is where it really spices up. This is really where it gets 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 good. So at the if you if you're still a, a, a class four enjoyer, the tactical M two armored rig is one of my absolute favorites. This is so so good. It's so cheap. The glasses, if you can buy them cheaply, this is sort of expensive, I guess ish. But this is about what forty k or so. Uh, the glasses you can get the visors cheap on the flea market or you can barter them for chainlets and chainlets are really cheap so this here is 22k for just the chainlet section and so adding that to to this here then that makes it about 60 60 something k for an amazing rig this thing's also got inherent protection against being stolen by people because it's physically so large it you don't save any space by having it here as you'll see when we load it up Bosch like this uh, you is there's two slots extra um and it's it's just enormous and people don't want to take it so this thing's really really cheap if you like class four then it's it's probably my my absolute favorite uh the other one that's good is the tv 110 barter that can also be quite decent but i'm, I'm not i'm not a huge fan of the tv 110 i think it's all right but if you die a lot i find that um where's it gone where's, where's the tv 110 gone i can find it now i've, I've managed to I've managed to lose it where uh where is it where is it where is it hmm Maybe it's quest logs. Let me just quickly check. TV one ten. Where's it gone? It is. It is Ragman three. Maybe I'm just blind. Oh no, I'm just blind. It's right here. <laughs> I'm just blind. It's right here. That's fine. But because because these shampoos and the bleachers are so cheap, that's you know forty k and uh, another forty k for these. It's only eighty k for the TV one ten. And this is one of the best armors from a protection point of view in class four. So that's good. Obviously, you've got the other three, the the, the Triforce of Class 5 uh, at, le at the at Level 3 Ragman, which is the, uh, you've got the Bagari rig, which is really, really good. And you've got the uh, the Gazelle, which is also really good. And these are all kind of the same price. And then at Prapple 3, which is the one that you get nice and early, you've got the Karund. Now, this makes diaries quite expensive a lot of the time, but for about 110 to 130k-ish, you're gonna be buying. Um, you're gonna be buying the the only class five that you can get access to at, at Prapple Four, which is awesome, and then that's why a lot of people use it because Prapple, like, you know, class five is just really, really, really decent. It's so it's a big step up against class four, even for something like the the Karun that dies quite easily against against ammo like you know the new BT or against PP or whatever. You can survive a lot more shots. So that's the deal. That's the deal with that. Then. I think there's. I don't think there's any more any more point covering any of the other armors um, that are super efficient, except for maybe Ragman Four. But like it's so far along the line, you'll probably be gearing up with whatever you want at this point. But it's a it's a shame they moved this up to uh, Ragman Four, the Tasmanian Tiger. But I understand it because it's so powerful. Um, for just these two, it costs about 120, 130k, and it's class six. Again, it's like the it's like the class six version of the Corrand because it dies really quick, but it's uh, it's it's super powerful. So you basically pick whichever body armors you think you're you're gonna you're gonna want. Um, in terms of headsets, like it really is personal preference. I kind of switch between something like the GSSH if I'm inside, like factory or labs where there's no ambient noise, or something like the Contact Twos or the Razors, uh, the XL Razors, or um, yeah, yeah, the Razors or the XLs, either, either or, um, because they cut down the ambient so much. In theory, the best ones are the Contact Fours, but they're they're very very expensive. So I usually go Contact Twos or, or Razors outside for like woods and shoreline and. GSSH is for factory and, and in, inside areas, basically, because they're, ju they're, they're good enough, but they're not very good with wind sounds and, and things like that. So we'll stick these on for just the, the, the min-max kit. Then we've got uh, bags. So I think generally, 
I think generally speaking, it doesn't really matter what you use for bags. It's really personal preference. And I've got like a whole bunch of them here, but the one that I normally try to use is, um, I don't even have it here. We've got the, the Burkett, which is slight, is, th this is the same as the, uh, this is the same as the day pack, except it's a bit heavier. This is nearly one kilo. The day pack is really good because it is so light. This is the black one, this guy. And it's again, it's 0.67. So this helps you stay underweight. It's got a nice, a nice little space inside and it's not even that much. You can in theory barter them for hard drive and a DVD. So most of the time this isn't any cheaper. Um, but that's that's a really, really good one. I, I normally like the day pack. It's, it's one of my go-tos uh, when I'm you know thinking of what bags I'm going to use. And usually you have a good stack of them. Uh, so we can normally keep that keep that on and and the weight is is extra nice so then outside of that you just need a couple of nades or, or whatever else like outside of this usually i just have like one propotol and recently i've been taking at least one grenade just just take one if you're not used to using grenades take one grenade and just make sure you use it every raid like if you hear somebody or you think somebody might be in a building just throw it right get used to using at least one grenade because they're, they're very powerful for flushing people out but they're much less powerful for actually killing people these days which um yeah, it's it's <laughs> it can be it it can be tough. We actually killed a couple of guys earlier today who were trying to use nades on us. It's uh, it, it's it's really rough. It's really rough these days trying to use it. Bons makes a good point. It says is, is a pocket propotol really worth the twenty five k? I mean, I I think it is. They're normally like if you can get them under twenty, you can get them down to seventeen. Um, the best way to do it is if you're running if you run golden star all the time, you can craft golden star in the hideout into propotols, which is a really really awesome way of doing it. Um, you can, you know, ibuprofen plus golden star bombs plus pile of meds, and you can you run both of these down, ibuprofens and golden stars, down to one. Then you can craft seven propotols almost for free, and you're basically using golden stars kind of for free and raid because this is 140k, 150k's worth of of meds, um, and you just use like one golden star, one ibuprofen, and then two piles of meds to to make them, which is really 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 good. Um, but I don't know because the thing is, you want something on your hot bar for for medding. If you want to, if you're pre medded all the time then maybe you don't need to. But as I said before, with the your cho your choice is either a you know propotol, adrenaline, or or the or morphine. And they're all they're all roughly the same price. You can't really get away with anything cheaper than about 16, 17k for morphines. That's kind of the issue. I feel like you may as well spend the extra on, on propotols. For nades, there was there's a little barter that I haven't really used that much yet, which is on Mechanic 2, which is this one. Fuses can sometimes be really cheap. So if you don't have any nades, um, they're a bit more expensive right now. But sometimes the fuses go down for a really low price. And you can actually get a VOG-17 for these if you if you need to get a grenade. It's not one that I've used yet, but it could be useful if, if they're really, really cheap. Eyewear. I don't think it's really worth it. Um, you could use the Batwolves or the Condors for the level 1 ricochet chance if you want. But they're just a little bit expensive, in my opinion, um, for the, the potential deflection. Unless you're playing like actual super end game, and that might, might help you. You know, the sort of 16, 17k, and then the, the Batwolf ones... These guys are doo, 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 a little bit more, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so about seventeen k from from Peacekeeper. I guess like nineteen with the exchange rate now. So, it's worth it for increasing your survival rate if you're using something like the ULAC. But I think most of the time it's probably just like not economic um, to to use those because people will take them every time. They hardly ever come back in insurance because most people don't run glasses and everyone takes them um, when when you die. So most of the time I don't think it's worth it. But you could use it to increase your survival rate a little bit so yeah i mean that that's basically it i think that's uh that's that's really that's really everything um there's a mention of the trizit barter um from from chat which is this one at ragman 3 which is the es lamps one which is which is pretty good so you can basically for 40k you can get like a nice big bag that one is actually pretty decent this one is much, it's a bit it's quite a bit bigger than the the burkets and those things so if you're going on a proper loot run then that can be that can definitely be be an option so there we go cool